I get my hands on you, you little weasel, I'll... What in tarnation you saw all fired head up about? He's the one that's been putting cactus needles in my bunk. He's only having fun. A few cactus needles ain't gonna kill you. Yeah, well, you didn't think it was so funny when he put a cockleburr under your saddle blanket. I ought to just... Leave me alone, I'll tell Uncle Buck to fire you. Yeah, why do you have not talk like that? Lucky didn't mean it. You're sure a big help. Archie! Archie, dear, come here. I don't want to. Now, you be good boy, Artie. Go see what your auntie wants. Now, Archie, darling, today's the opening day of school, and I want you to come in, clean up, and get ready. I don't want to go to school, and I ain't going to take no bath. Sure you're going to take a bath. I built a shower for you. Look, I'll show you how it works. See that? <laughs> nope. I ain't gonna take no shower. Oh, now, Archie, dear, Eddie's gonna lose patience with you. Do you want me to give him a bath, Mrs. Peters? Oh, bring him on up to the house, Lucky. Hey, now, wait a minute. I oh, wait a minute. that ain't no way to... Hey, talk to you, little imp. Oh, it's now, a... Wendy, he was only having fun. A little water ain't gonna kill you. Hey, <laughs> if I don't smack that kid's ears down. Hey, let me out. Put him down, Lucky. You didn't have to mix in. I don't need nobody to take my part. I wasn't taking your part. I just didn't want to see Lucky get clawed up on account of you. What am I going to do with him, Hoppy? He just won't mind. I don't know. You got nobody to blame but yourself, ma'am. He wasn't like this when he first come out here. It seemed like you and Buck and everybody else around here went out of their way to spoil a fella that had the makings of a good man in him. Well, why don't you try talking to him, Hoppy? You know, you've always been able to handle him. I would if I thought he was worthwhile, but I don't think he is anymore. You got me all wrong there, son. I like you a lot. That is, I like the boy you was when you first come out here. Well, supposing people were always making you do things you didn't want to. How would you like it? Well, if them things was good for me, I'd try to like doing them. I bet you wouldn't like going to school. Not if you met up with that teacher of ours. Oh, it's not as bad as all that, is it? That's all you know. Hoppy, cross my heart. She's the meanest person in the world. I think you and me had better have a little talk. What do you say? There we are. Now, man to man, what about this school? Gee, them spurs are elegant. We stay on them. Anything that's worth having is worth earning. If I had a pair like them, I wouldn't even mind going to school. Spurs or no spurs, you're going to school. You wouldn't want to grow up to be a common cowhand like me, would you? Sure I would. Look at all the fun you have, riding, shooting, and fighting. Boy, if I could ever do that like you. Yeah, but by the time you were my age, this country's going to be run by the men with the best brains, not the best guns. That's why you got to go to school. Or someday you're going to be the boss of the Bar 20. Who, me? Yep. After your Uncle Buck is gone, it's going to be up to you to go on making the Bar 20 brand stand for honesty and square shooting. Like it always has. Gee, Hoppy, I never looked at things that way before. Well, then maybe you'll look at things my way and go on to school without making such a fuss about it. Will you? Well, I guess so. But if that teacher of ours does just one more thing to me... She's I... not... What's up, Buck? Dan Rowley and his rustlers made another raid off there to the west. And a little bit too close for comfort. Rowley, huh? 
Say, we'd better get that herd away from the border. Wendy? Lucky. Can I go too, Uncle Buck? You're going to school just like you promised me. Wendy, see that he gets there. Lucky, get the rest of the boys. Gee, I wish I hadn't a promised Hoppy I'd go to school. I always miss all the fun. Yeah? Well, here's one time you ain't going to miss all the fun. Come here. I'll Wendy, learn you to dump water Wendy, on me, no, you young no, scallywag. No. How do you like that, eh? No. Silver Bell Meadows. They'll be safe there. Well, we outguessed them, boys. They're hazing that big bunch right down here into our hands. Happen to know that fellow on the white horse? Well, let's hop along Cassidy. What of it? Trying to lift that herd with Cassidy on the job is like sticking your neck in a buzzsaw. No man ever lived who can't be dropped. Oh, yeah? Most of those who've tried it are pushing up sagebrush. We're waiting here for Raleigh. I can lift that herd just as easy as Raleigh can. We ride against Casty's guns. Be on Raleigh's say so. Not yours. Hey, Hoppy! Things are sure popping in the town. What's happened? Plenty of trouble at the schoolhouse. Artie? Yeah, the mayor says you gotta do something right now. Darn that kid. Starting trouble at a time like this. Well, I ought to lace the living ah, day. Ah, so him. fast now, Buck. That boy ain't really bad. You've just spoiled him. All right. Suppose you handle him. I will. And if Artie deserves it, after what he promised me, I'll tan his hide. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can see you doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That gunfighter you're scared of is moving out. How about us moving in? Not without Raleigh. Lucky, you and Slim and a couple of the boys hold the herd right there. Have the rest of them ride to the ranch house with me. All right, Buck. Grief this time, Thorpe. It's those kids again. They've gone on strike against their teacher. Probably burned the schoolhouse down by now. Uh, you're no cripple. Why didn't you stop them? I would have. But the last time I stopped their innocent little pastimes, you threatened to take me apart. Yeah, and that still goes if you ever use that quirt on them again. You don't have to handle them kids that way. Then suppose you handle them in your own quiet way, Mr. Cassidy. Mr. Thorpe, that's not a bad idea. Come on, please. 
Ain't that pretty? Too pretty to be true. spread out anymore, we miss our chance. Come on. Wait. How did you get here? Mm. A distant time, Rawley. Sutton here was about to move in on the herd. You'll disobey orders once too often. You'll be late once too often. Ride down there and spread out. When I whistle, rush the riders. Run the stock through here and across the border. Mighty nice, Artie. But where's your teacher? Uh, well, we're just practicing until she gets here. You might as well keep it up till she does. Go on. How about singing Clementine for me, Artie?
All right. Open the door. Open the door. You don't have trouble. Well, I haven't done anything. Go on, open it. Open the door. Stop interfering, you. You're not going to hit this child with that thing. That's right. Encourage him. If ever a brat was born to stretch a rope, it's that little imp. But I'll take it out of him. <laughs> oh, my hands. Oh, I'm through trying to beat anything into these young outlaws. Anyone can have the job. I quit. You've had a spanking coming for a long time, and I'm going to give it to you. If you do, I'll tell Uncle Buck to fire you. Yeah, well, it'll be worth losing my job just to reform you. Hey, whoop, whoop, whoop. Wait a minute, Huffy. Wait a minute. Oh. Hoppy! Hoppy! Wally's men just raided the herd. Does Buck know about it? I sent Slim over to tell him. That's another score we got to even. It all happened so fast we didn't have a chance. Anybody see Raleigh? Nobody ever sees him. He hits from behind like a wolf. Then he's gone just as quick. Let's follow him. Come on. Too late, Hoppy. They're across the border by this time. Maybe so, but Raleigh will ride that way again, and when he does, we'll be waiting for him. Say... Funny that that trouble at the school started just before the raid. What do you mean by that? Nothing much. Only I don't like the way that school being run. Hey, Mayor, come on out. We want to talk to you. Looks like he's not back yet. Why, what's the trouble? We're a parents' committee, Mayor. There ain't been any school for two weeks. Where's that teacher you promised us? Oh, I took care of that while I was away. Oh. Ah. Folks, your children deserve the kind of education guaranteed them by our glorious Constitution. And that is why I went all the way to Santa Fe to get a competent teacher to handle your children. A man. He'll be here any day now. No one can handle the little rowdies. They'll all turn out to be Dan Rawley. Where's the schoolmaster? She's it. My name is June Lake. Oh, it's very nice of you to meet me like this. But it's your first school. It is. Ha! You won't last long with those young pits. I sent for a man teacher. There's no place for you here in Crockett. Well, surely you won't send me away without even giving me a chance. I'm sorry, but we can't use you. Just a minute, Miss Lake. Young lady stays right here. And you might just as well like it. Where do you get off mixing in my business, Cassidy? I thought it was about time somebody did. So I went to the superintendent of schools at Santa Fe and explained the situation. He said he was going to send us something brand new in the way of school moms. Looks to me like he has. There's no way to treat a girl after she's traveled all the way out here to try to help your children. Thank you, Mr. Cassidy. 
But I don't think I'll like it here, now. I think I'll go back east where I came from. Well, I can't say that I blame you much, miss, but we really want you to stay. Poppy's right, miss. We won't let you leave us if we can help it. You can come and live with us at the Bar 20. It's not far from town. Cassidy. I'm telling you for the last time, I'll not have you interfering in my affairs. If you try riding straight and I won't have to. What are you insinuating? Figure it out for yourself. Well, Mr. Cassidy hurt that man. Well, he got what he asked for. Get in the buckboard. The West still is wild, isn't it? Yeah, and spots. But wait till you meet your pupils. Ah. He's turning the bar 20 into a dude ranch. Oh, boy. Oh. Boys, this is the new school teacher, and her name is June Lake. Glad to meet you. And this you. is Bill and Jim and Bob and Pete. Well, it's all the boys. And this is Wendy Hammer, the best rider, the best fighter, the best shooter, and the biggest liar in the whole territory. <laughs> but he's all right if we can overlook oh, all Oh, I right. don't take no shot in that, miss. I'm supposed to be the meanest man in this part of the county. You know, four or five years ago, I was down in the Eastern Territory. Hey, hey, wait, wait a minute, with you. wait a minute. And this is Lucky Jenkins. He's an all right boy if you just keep a tight rope on him. There's a dance down at Crockett, miss, this Saturday night. May I have the honor? You better look out for him, miss. Lucky's got a gal in every town from here to jump off. Oh, <laughs> get away from her, boys. Give her a chance to breathe. You'll have to kind of excuse the boys, miss. They haven't seen a pretty girl for so long. It's kind of gone to their heads again. <laughs> <laughs> Come in the house, Miss June. Boys, bring her back. <laughs> hey. Take a sniff. Mmm, smells right nice. Yeah. Well, I bet it ain't yours. Smells just like sweet grass in the springtime. No, it's more like Friday water in a barbershop. Why, you moth-eaten old horned toad. And at your age. Finally fallen, huh? No, oh, women don't bother me none. Too old? Oh, I'm too smart. I'm just trying to give you an idea what you're going to see around here from now on. <laughs> School mom, huh? Yep. Here two minutes and she's got the place turned upside down. Yeah, the old place got a little life to it now, huh? Yeah, how do you expect to get any work out of these cow hands now? Oh, that's my worry, Buck. Yeah, well, I've been wondering... Wondering if this schooling means so much after all. Well, I think it does, Buck. I'd like to see every child have a chance at a little schooling. Say, you ain't figuring on turning Artie into one of them educated little Lord Fauntleroy's, are you? No, hardly that. But I would like to see him get a better start in life than we got. Well, I got plenty out of life. Don't I own this country for miles around here? Yeah, I know that, Buck. But when you rode in here and slung your saddle 40 years ago, all it took was nerve and a six-shooter and hard work. But things was different then. Different and better. Fella had to be a man. Yeah, but if Artie expects to hang on to what you built for him, he's got to be a different kind of man than you. I can teach him all he needs to know. But you won't always be here, Buck. All right. 
I won't be here. But I know, Hoppy, that I can depend on you to look out for the boy, to teach him things, and to steer him right. But I won't be here always either. But your land will be and your brand. You've gone a long ways to make the bar 20 stand for what it does. With your help. Thanks. But you've made bar 20 something to be proud of. And you got to keep it that way. My buck fist country hadn't started to grow yet. Someday, maybe there'll be mills and factories and packing houses right here on this spot. And with the right kind of men to carry it on, your brand, the Bar 20, will be known and honored all around the world. Now, don't you see why Artie's got to have some real schooling? Say, Hoppy, maybe we ought to get one of them college professors down here. You know, from Harvard or Yale. Oh, we'd better learn to walk before we try to run. I think the schoolman will be all right for the time being. Oh, well, have it your own way. <laughs> you usually do. Mr. Cassidy. Thank you. After the way you fought for me, I'll simply have to make good. I got an idea you will. Well, take a good look. Here comes your biggest problem. Oh, oh there, you slab-sided, arm-headed, sky-jumping, centipede! Whoa! Hold it there now. Hold. Guess I showed you what. Hey. Where'd you get that black eye? Some kids on the tough side of Crockett. But I walloped them both, single-handed, like this. See, I let it with my left, like this. Then I came up with an uppercut. Then I let it give him my left, and I swung. Ooh, my hand, you busted it. Oh, my, that's too bad. Artie, I want you to meet your new school teacher, Miss Lake. How do you do, Artie? What do you do with the hat? Better. Don't let me keep you from your work, Mr. Cassidy. last long. Oh, I shouldn't care to remain where I wasn't wanted. I run the last teacher out of town. Why? The only way she ever tried to teach us anything was with a club. Oh, I see. Well, I'll try to do it differently. Even if the kids do like you, you wouldn't stay long. You'd marry some fella right off. Every pretty girl that ever came out here did. But don't go sit in your cap for Hoppy. I don't think he likes girls. What you reading? Who's he? Sir Galahad. Sir Galahad? What was he? A knight in shining armor who always fought for what he thought was right. Gee, he's got a white horse just like Hoppy. But Hoppy could outride him. You rather like this hop along, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Everybody does. He's the best rider, the best fighter anywhere. Bet he can knock that old Sir Galahad right out of his old tin suit with one hand tied behind him. Can I borrow that? Can you read well enough to understand it? Well, I mean, just to look at the pictures. Mm -mm. Well, couldn't you and me read together? You mean you and I. What's a deaf? One's right and the other's wrong. Well, couldn't we? <laughs> oh, please. What's the use if I'm not going to last long here? Got many books like that? Oh, lots. Maybe you'll last quite a while. When do we start? As soon as you wash your face and comb your hair. Wait here. I'll be right back. <laughs> you've done wonders with that boy. I think you've got him one over. Perhaps it was the Galahad thing that did it. You know, using that Galahad fellow wasn't such a bad idea at that. You've read Sir Galahad? 
Oh, sure. King Arthur and Lancelot and Elaine. Anybody can understand Tennyson, even me. Mm. Yeah, when I was a little kid, I used to dream, too, about shiny armor and whipping the world. But I guess the only thing me and uh, Galahad ever had in common was our white horses. You have his shining golden armor, too. A brave heart. Well, that's, uh, that's mighty nice of you to say those things, ma'am, but I think you're giving me a lot the best of it. All right, a little more. That's it. Hey, you! Quit mooning around there like a lovesick calf and get busy with that shovel. School mom ain't gonna run away. What's the matter with you, you old mossback? You jealous because she didn't make a fuss over you? Oh, you think she didn't, eh? <laughs> I don't see you carrying around no souvenirs like the ones she give me. Happy? You think I'm too old to get married? Why, of course not. A man's no older than he feels. Well, I don't take no back seat for none of the cow hands around here. I feel like a colt this morning. <sighs> you might be a good catch for some bright girl. Yeah. Got a nice homestead picked out up north and considerable nest egg stole away. You know, hubby, I got a notion to pop the question. Mightn't be a bad idea at that. Meanwhile, you better get busy on that wire stretcher. Uh oh. Didn't I tell you what would happen? We've got a new corral to build. Not a hand to be found on the ranch. I'll round up the boys, Buck. All right. Come on, boy. And while I'm gone, you dig. Unless you want to feel something swift as an arrow. And I don't mean through the heart. I've got something else to do. Well, be sure to give her my love. <laughs> Come on, boy. And over there a little bit, Indian reservation. You know, every now and then the young bucks come over here and scalp and kill a few people, and we have to run them back. It's nice living around here, except nothing exciting ever happens. <laughs> Is this the shortest way to the schoolhouse? No, I mean, man, I mean miss. I want you this way because I got a confession to make. You have? I rustled something that belonged to you. Isn't that all? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Where's the other one? You ought to know you gave it to Wendy. I'd completely forgotten that. Well, he hasn't. And listen, Miss, if he starts talking marriage to you, don't you pay no attention to him. Why, that old homestead of his ain't worth a hoot. I bet he hasn't got $100 in that bank account of his. I'll try to remember your warning, Lucky. Don't you think we ought to drive faster? I'm afraid I'll lose my first school before I even start if I'm late.
What's going on here? Why aren't you fellas at the ranch where you belong? Why, if Miss Judy had seen this old hen coop like it was, she'd have flapped her pretty little wings and flew right back to Boston. Oh, she would, huh? My, how nice and clean and lovely. It was so good of you, Mr. Cassidy, to do this for me. Oh, but I, uh, I didn't do it. Oh. oh. I can't find words to thank you, boys. Oh, that's all right. Thank right. you. Just a minute. You're too big to be going to school. My, how fine you look this morning, Artie. Where are the other pupils? I'm the only pupil you got, Miss June. All the other kids played hooky. Oh, dear. I'm certainly getting off to a bad start. Boys, go out and round up every kid you can find and get them in here. I hope I'm not upsetting your routine. Oh, not a bit. We haven't got a thing to do this morning, except build a new corral and brand a couple of hundred wild yearlings. But so long as I'm kind of responsible for you being here, I want to see that you get a good start. Well, as long as you're here, you might as well make yourself useful. Come on. It's beginning to look like you might win a pair of spurs after all. Now, we'll put this on. Oh, no. Turn I... around. There. That'll keep you nice and clean. Now, here. Go and dust those blackboards. Yes, ma'am. Go on. anything with a face like that being called Snooks. <laughs> How do you expect me to have any discipline if you laugh at a thing like that? Oh, oh, oh that's beautiful. You shouldn't drop it out. Here, dust that out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what in Sam Hill's going on here? Oh, good morning, lady. Would you like a bouquet? The word is not Boketti. I'm no lady, and why ain't you working on the fence? Oh, well, well lucky run off, and I, I, I figured I'd find him here, so I... Uh... Hey, you could do a little explaining yourself. How come you're playing the housemaid? Well, you see, I'm, uh, I'm kind of responsible for Miss June being here. Uh, uh, you see... Uh... Well, yes, I see you all right. I suppose I'll have to be riding herd on you now, same as Lucky. Fellas, get back to bar 20 and get busy on that corral. <laughs> <laughs> Go on now, get out of here. <laughs> well, what are you two waiting for? Oh, he's appointed himself a member of the Board of Education. I gotta stay here and keep an eye on the young idiot. All right, come on. Oh, 
drop in to tell you how bad I feel about the way I acted when you first got here. I can see by the way you handle these young outlaws that you know your business. And as mayor of Crockett, I want you to know that I stand squarely behind you from now on. Venison again? That's all we've had for days. Oh, you're always bellering about something. Last week you was complaining about the quail and the dove. Now you eat deer meat and you like it. i oh, sure be glad to get back to the ranch and get some of them good old baked beans. You know, Wendy, next week it'll be June. June. I wonder how she stands it down there all alone, without me. Without you. She don't know if you're dead or alive, and she don't care. Oh, is that so? Well, maybe she don't. You know, she could be married by now, for all we know. Eh, Happy? Sure, sure. She probably is. Give me another hunk. Don't you think you ought to go in, Artie? It's almost your bedtime. I don't want to. No, oh, I think you'd better. If you want to be rested up when Hoppy and the other boys get back. When are they coming? I heard your Uncle Buck say they'd be home next week. Boy, that'll be elegant, won't it? It certainly will. Now run off to bed. All right. Night, Miss June. Good night, Artie. You sound as though you missed those cowhands in spite of everything I've tried to do. Well, I might have at that. If you hadn't been so kind and attentive. Well, that makes me feel better. For a minute, you had me worried. Lucky! Hi! Hello, boy! Hi, fellas! Hi, Slim! Hi, 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 Hello, Hi, Hi, How are you, Buck? Fine. Good work, Hobby. Say, I'm sure glad to see that the stock winter's so fine and fat. I've got a big order for Santa Fe at top prices. Oh, that's fine, Buck. Any trouble? No, it's been so lonesome and quiet around here, even a visit from Raleigh's gang would have been welcome. <laughs> <laughs> How many little Junie? She's fine, Wendy. She's all right. right. We <laughs> Is she going steady with anybody yet? No, no not yet. No. She's still yeah. looking around. She then I still got a chance, huh? <laughs> you got a chance. Sure, Good Wendy. Man. He's just sore-headed, you know. <laughs> what are we going to do next? Well, we'll haze the herd down below to the meadows near Crockett. Then we'll rest them there a couple of days before we start the drive to Santa Fe. That's good. All right, boys, break camp, and we'll get the herd on the way downhill. Boy, oh, would oh, I be oh, glad to get out of here. Day never come. Didn't I tell you men to stay out of this town and keep on the cover until you're needed? We're tired of waiting on you, Raleigh. The men are getting to think you've gone yellow on us. The boys are broke. Some of them think you're trying to give them the runaround. You needn't worry. I was just going to get word to you. I'm planning a job. Where? Next week. Bar 20 is moving a big bunch of steers down from the mountain. They'll be pastured on the meadows near Crockett. We'll run them through Silver Bell Canyon across the border, like before. Yes, but uh, let's play it safe. Why? Quiet. See what he has to say. They're pulling off a big shindig at the schoolhouse. Graduation exercises for the kids. While everybody's celebrating there, you'll pull off the job without taking any chances. We? Yeah. Where'll you be? <laughs> Why, boys, you don't think I'd renege at this stage of the game, do you? I don't think you'd be acting very smart if you did. Come on. Better get your mind off that school, Mom, Raleigh. Women don't mix in our business.
Busy tonight? No more than usual. I'd, uh... Well, I'd... I'd like to go over the plans for the graduation exercises with you. You know, arrange the program. I think it's a good idea. Then I'll call after dinner. All right. Yeah! Kind of prettied up, ain't you, uh, Wendy? Oh, he's got Corton. <laughs> well, why not? Every other cop folks had a chance since we've been gone, and she's turned them all down. Hey, hey, give me my authority order. Just smelling nice ain't gonna get you no place with Junie. Nothing is gonna get anybody any place with June. She's leaving us. When? Right after graduation tomorrow. She's taking the stage east. Going home to Boston. It's too bad. Why, Artie is a different boy. He stood at the head of his class all winter. Sure hate to stop his learning now. I've been thinking. You know this country's changing? Fruit and grain are gonna grow right where my herds run now. Yes, siree. Mills and factories are gonna be here too. And my brand, the Bar 20, going to be known in every country in the world. Buck, you sure do get fine ideas. You bet I do. I'm no old fogey. I'm a thinker, and I keep up to date. I want Artie to be smart enough to hold what I've built up for him by using his brains, not guns. So... Point is, how am I going to figure a way to keep June from leaving us? Something's got to be done about it. If I was only younger, well, about your age, Hoppy, and unmarried, I'd know what to do. Buck, your worries is over. I'll marry Junie myself. <laughs> If I was to tell her that, she wouldn't wait until tomorrow to leave. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Women always did like me, even if they don't show it much. Well, how about me? I'll just take her out in the moonlight and sing her pretty song and hustle her right over to the preachers. You're both a couple of blatant sheep herders if you can't see that it's Hoppy she wants. Oh, now you're doing a little blatant, Buck. <laughs> <laughs> I got to withdraw straws to see who asks her. Windy, Lucky, Hoppy, where are you? Hello, boy. Junie. Hello, Junie. Amanda just told me you were back. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. You're a sight for sore eyes, Junie. Uh, you sure are. See, I just heard a new song. Would you like to have me sing? What's oh. the matter? June, are you forgetting you and I have a date? Oh, it can wait. But it's important. Well, I'm sorry, but I didn't know the boys were coming home. It's my last night here, you know. We can go over the graduation plans tomorrow morning in the schoolhouse, can't we? Then your duty to your school isn't as important as these cowhands? Well, if it hadn't been for these cowhands, I wouldn't have had the school. Oh. Please try to understand. All right. Hoppy, I'm sure of myself now. I can always feel that with your help, I've accomplished something, something worthwhile. Why, tomorrow you're going to be as proud of those children as I am. I know I will be, June. Mm.
the flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Miss June, I've got something I'd like to ask you. Of course. Well, go ahead. Oh, I, I can't. Here, I, I couldn't we sort of go. Could we? <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, Mayor Thorpe, the reception committee want to speak to you. Come on. Raleigh's going to hang around that school mom until it's too late. I'm going to tell him what's what. If you got sense enough, stay out of them bar rooms while you're feeling so big. Say, you seen June? Uh, June? Oh, yeah, yeah. She just went out that way. Much obliged. Wendy. If we weren't short of pies, I wouldn't have stopped you. If you can't wait for the eating to start, why, nibble on that. Here. What with? I, that is, we, well, I mean, Hoppy and Wendy and me, we... Just we, what are you trying to tell me? Well, we sort of kind of decided that maybe you ought to marry me. Well, you're a very nice boy, Lucky, and I think a lot of you. But it's more like a girl would care for her brother. Oh, I get it. You sure got my sympathy, Miss Juni. So you put it over, eh, sir? Yeah, all over. Won't Ma be surprised to find out I got a sister? Hey, he's acting daffier than usual. Did you turn him down? Have you something to ask me, too? Well, if you ain't taking up with any of the other Bar 20 boys, I... I guess up to me. Well, it won't be easy to say no to you, Wendy. But I'm afraid I'll have to. You mean to say you're turning me down, too? Why, Junie, you're missing the chance of a lifetime. <laughs> Women have been setting their cap for me as long as I can remember. Well, I can easily understand that, Wendy, but still, I have to turn you down. Oh, I do like you lots. But it's uh, more like a girl would care for a father. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you didn't say grandfather. <laughs> oh, be a dear, Wendy. Go tell Hoppy I want to talk to him. Yeah. I'm not so sure I'll take them, Hoppy. You've earned them, Marty, and I'm sure proud of you. Gee, Hoppy, I'll keep them always. Thanks. <laughs> Junie wants to see you. I'm darned if I ever thought I'd turn out to be your father-in-law. Father-in-law? Yeah. Hey, what's the matter with you? You been drinking that hard cider? Go ahead now. Just be a dear and don't keep her waiting. <laughs> Hoppy, I just wanted a few words with you alone before this is over and I go. All right. I wanted to thank you. Because it's to you I owe success and happiness. Well, that's mighty nice of you to feel that way, but I want to thank you for the happiness you brought all of us. And I want you to know that we'll be awfully glad to have you coming back in the fall. Well, I, I won't be coming back, Hoppy. You won't? No, I, I'm going to be married. Well, who's the lucky man? Mr. Thorpe. Thorpe. We fooled everybody. Judson didn't want it to get out until we leave on this afternoon stage. We're going to Boston to live. He's going to invest his money there. You won't tell anybody. Well, won't you offer me your good wishes? 
There's a very good reason why I can't. Oh, I, I shouldn't have told you because you hate him. It's just that I'm thinking of your happiness. So am I. I know what I want, a home of my own. And you're entitled to it. But your happiness has been here with these children. You have something they need. You've proven that. Now you're throwing it all away. Love is important, too. Yes, that's most important. But I'm just wondering if... if you are really in love. Who are you to say that? What do you know about it? Why, you're a man's man and satisfied to remain that. I wonder if Galahad, too, was so busy being Galahad that he had no time for anything else. I'm sorry you feel that way about things. I thought you of all people would understand. Well, it's your own life, June. I'm sorry I said anything. Good gracious, child, I've been looking all over for you. Hurry up. The exercises is starting. fellas ever hear folks say how Thorpe made all that money he's supposed to have? Oh. Uh -huh. Hey, you don't ranch. You don't mind. There's only one other way a man can save any great amount of money in this country without everybody knowing his business. Rustler? And there's only one big rustler left. Raleigh. We'll give him the last few inches of rope, and if I'm right, he'll hang himself. Good luck, Miss June. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss June. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks for being so nice to the children. Oh, I've enjoyed them so much. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss June. Hoppy and the boys. I thought they'd say goodbye to me. Never mind them. We've got to hurry. Why the hurry? The stage doesn't leave for hours. We're not taking the stage here. We'll catch it out on the desert. I've hired a rig. Why? To avoid more goodbyes. It'll be much easier, dear. Just think. In a few hours, we'll be married. And in a week or two, we'll be in the East. not for you. Running out on us, huh? I'll give you a thousand dollars to clear out. Money ain't gonna square what stands between you and me. Get a plug in the back just now, Raleigh. 
but I want you to know why you're getting it. I know now what you're trying to tell me, Hopper. He's Dan Rowley. shot off his mouth and spilled the beans. We got to run for it. We ain't going empty-handed. We're taking up cattle across the border and you're going with us. Come on.
Rustlers will never bother us again, mister. Hoppy, looks like Mr. Rawley will be put away safe for a long time. You're coming back, aren't you, Mr. Jim? You know, we're, uh... I mean, the children at school are going to miss you a lot. Is that what you started to say? Well, not exactly. <laughs> I'll be back, Hoppy. Fine. Hurry up, honey, or we're going to miss the stagecoach. All right, come on, boy. Bye. Goodbye, Junie. Bye, June. Come on, boy. 